Good evening. I bring to you grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the baby born at Bethlehem. Amen. I'm Adam Peck, I'm one of the pastors here at Holy Cross, and I want to welcome you all uh, to making this a part of your Christmas celebration tonight and uh, whatever else is coming up. And I, I like to get a little bit of a, a lay of the land um, of who's with us tonight. So tell me, uh, how many of you are, are here because you are here with family uh, that, that has invited you to come along with you? To come along. Family has invited you. Yep, good. Uh, anybody here with a friend? Okay, good, yep, yeah, all right, very good. Who is hosting someone at their house from out of town? Yeah, yeah, very good. So, theme of the message tonight, uh, finding at home this Christmas. Folks, you've got a, a lot of people, those of you that raised your hand and said, I am bringing, I have someone here from out of town. How many of you are hoping that they kind of have a sense of they, they feel at home while they're there? None of you, okay, well, I know they're... <laughs> God bless you. I'll be leaving in the morning, and if you need my house, I can get you the code. Uh, we'll be away in St. Louis, but uh, yeah. So that sense of at home, even though we go away from home at this time, I think is still something that we're striving for. I mean, there's songs out there that are about this, I'll be home for Christmas, right? And other ones like that. There's a sense that we strive for this. We long for this kind of thing. And so I'm wondering if you could take some time to talk about that. You already greeted one another and introduced yourself, and a lot of you are sitting by family or a friend. And if not, scooch up next to someone and, and introduce yourself and say hi, and then talk about this. What is at home for you? What is it? And I would encourage you to use all of your senses. When you think of, when I'm at home, I am, where are you? What does it look like? What does it smell like? Who's around you? I'm going to give you about 30 to 45 seconds to talk about this. I know it's not normal. We don't talk in church. We just do what's on the screen, but we're doing something different tonight. So talk to the person next to you about these things. Go. All right, 10 more seconds. All right, tell the person you talked to, thank you, and I've got to pay attention to the pastor now. All right, so uh, raise the hands here. I can't get responses from all of you. How many of you described that you are with some loved ones? That's part of the at-home feeling. Uh, how many of you described something about food? Yeah, there were some quick hands back there. I love it. How many of you described something about how something smells? Okay. Now, of that, how many of it was food-related? Okay. How many of it was some other smell-related? Right? So at my grandma's house, it always smelled like uh, she had a wood-burning stove, and we, we could smell the, the wood burning down there. Or it just, she lived on the lake, and so it kind of had this a little bit of a, you know, a, a homey mustiness to it, you know. <laughs> you, you laugh, but it's real. You, you know it. <laughs> so part of at home for me is, is that and, the, and those things. But I think it might also be a uh, part of uh, that home, that, that idealized home kind of thing. I mean, as I, I think of those, those uh, socks put up by the fire and the, the drink next to it, maybe the Hallmark card kind of feel to it, that ideal at home that we're striving for. 
Does it involve maybe making sure that you've uh, got the right gifts that are purchased, that, that the right food have gotten taken, that, that everybody's got a place where they can sleep and are taken care of when they come in from out of town that they've gotten there safely? All things are a sense of at home. Once, uh, once mom or grandma's got everybody in the nest, then she can finally take a deep breath. What if we were to describe the emotions that come along with it? How many of you would say that uh, restfulness is, is part of that at-home feeling? Or uh, contentedness? Yeah? Maybe uh, a sense that things are predictable, familiar. And you might have a sense of that already. But you know, the, the reality of it is sometimes different than the idealized thing that we might uh, pick out for a Christmas card that we might send to someone. This is that time of year where you get pictures in the mail of folks, or, or they send you that, that Christmas letter, uh, the, you know, the, the one that's in like size 10 font, front and back, and you're thankful that they didn't give a second page this year as they tell the annals of the year. You know what I'm talking about. And usually it's all positive stuff. But there's a, a, a Christian comedian, his name's John Christ, and he took a different take on this, and I, I think one that's maybe a little more honest. This is his work, not mine, and fictitious, but I still think it, it makes a point that reveals a, a layer of Christmas and the reality of this all that doesn't otherwise come to the forefront this time of year. This is his fictitious Christmas letter that maybe tells a little truer story. You tell me. Landon, our precocious and super annoying three-year-old, whines all the time, doesn't go to sleep when he's told, cries when he doesn't get gushers after dinner. Most of the artwork he brings home from the church nursery is, well, awful. And our pride and joy but also perhaps the source of our drinking problem. Hunter, <laughs> our energetic yet unathletic nine-year-old who just got cut from a soccer team that doesn't even keep score in their games. <laughs> I know, how does that happen? Spends most of his time on his iPad. Said his first swear word this year. Super exciting. <laughs> Maddie, 18 goes over her data each month on her cell phone. Was grounded for two weeks this fall after she snuck a guy in her window to watch a movie. Got fired from Sephora after telling her boss, just because I'm on the schedule doesn't mean I need to be there. Wants to drop out of school to become insta-famous. Tom and Lisa somehow still married after 41 years. Tom still tucks in his t-shirts into his jeans, just took money from our retirement account to buy a fishing boat. His golf shoes are still currently on the steps after I told him three times to take them upstairs. Merry Christmas from the Allen family. <laughs> Peace, rest, contentedness, that sense of at home. But reality still reigns. Sure, maybe that looks like uh, an idealized Christmas. Next to the Christmas tree, a fire blazing. But is it? Is that the whole story? There's only one set of feet there. Is that because this person's alone at Christmas? No other family around, relationships tattered? The fire seems like a great idea until maybe you hear the rest of the story and it's because the electricity got cut off last week and it's the only warmth in her house. And then there's the coffee cup with the knit koozie on it. Is it because the coffee is also ice cold along with the toes? Or because she had no one else to knit for and so she made one for her cup? Christmas time sometimes is where we might feel the least at home. When the financial struggles feel heavier, where the health burdens and, and issues weigh 
even more, where the missing of loved ones, where the relationships that aren't what you hope they would be seem to come to the forefront even more. What is that picture that you're aiming for, the idealized Christmas? If it's trying to be something that comes from your surroundings that you can manage, that you can plan for, that you can hope for, that you can design for a little while, I think we all long for this, that we hope for this, to transport ourselves for just a little while into that idealized world. So envelop or insulate ourselves with these things from the stresses of the day-to-day life to find peace in the midst of it, at least forget about it for a little while. But the 26th, they'll still come. And maybe you might even not make it through the 25th without it rearing its head in there, too. Friends, we're never going to find that at-home feeling fully or permanently or for a long time in our surroundings. It only comes through our Savior, the baby born at Christmas, who came to literally be at home with us, Emmanuel, God with us. To be with us, not not just along with us and just pat our backs along the way, but to do something about the problems that we're in, the struggles in our lives, the, the difficulty of living on this side of eternity in a world that is broken and is in need of rescue, we're in it. And if you have a sense that you don't feel at home here, I don't get that 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 sense and that feeling, you're right. That's why he sent Jesus to rescue us from the lives that we're in, the struggles that we're at, the, the, the troubles, the difficulties in relationships or in health or in finances or job troubles, to rescue us from having that difficulty to the nth degree because without Jesus Christ, without him who is with us here on this side of eternity, if we take this on our own, in the end, we will be separated from God forever. In eternity, it's called hell. It's forever being separated from Emmanuel, God with us. But he came to be with us so that he could live the perfect life in our place, to do what we couldn't do so that he could make a trade with us, a trade that that isn't anywhere near fair, but it's what he intended. The Father, while we were still sinners, sent Jesus Christ to die for us. And, And in living that perfect life, he took the punishment that we deserve and gives us what Jesus Christ earned for us in his perfect life. And he says, here, now all of you can look like Jesus to my Father so that he has only one word for you. Come be with me forever. Jesus, as he's described his life here on earth and what he was doing, he said, look, I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, then I will return and I'll come back and I'll take you to be with me so that we can be together for all of eternity. In my house are many rooms. He pictures this heavenly mansion, this new heavens and new earth, this together with God in perfection and eternity where there's no relationship strife or financial struggles or health burdens so that we could be at home with him forever. That's what this theme verse for tonight is all about. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. And if that life isn't a a life where we can manage our surroundings to find the peace that we long for, what is it that he's promised? I think it's a little bit more like something else at my grandma's house. It's not the smell of the wood-burning stove or the mustiness of her house near the lake, but it was in the lake. See, it's a a shallow lake, and, and we would swim in it every year. And uh, because it was shallow, there's this big rock out there that uh, would move around every year because the ice would freeze all the way down. It would shift around and stuff. It would move all the rocks and stuff around there. So the fun thing every spring was that we, uh, me and my cousins, would go out there and uh, walk out, and we'd be in water up to our waist and getting a little bit further. Usually you had to get into the water that was maybe a little bit more here, and the seaweed is starting to get up between your toes and all those sorts of things. And all of a sudden, you would get to that rock, and it was always a challenge of who could get there first. And all of a sudden, you'd be, now I'm in waist-high water, though I was up to my neck in it. That rock, standing on that rock, that's what 
life through him is like. Aside from him, you're up to your neck in it. But with him, we stand firm. Are we away from the troubles? Did he transport me out and put me on a beach in Bermuda? No. But he allows me in the midst of it to gain perspective, to take a deep breath, to realize where I'm at and who is with me. A God who sent his son for me. A God who died for me. A God who promised that he has conquered this world, sin, death, the devil, and all the difficulties that come along with it. And he said, you're not going to be in this forever. I've got something even better, and it's going to last forever. It's coming. And even now, I am with you. And I'm giving you glimpses of it here as you get a chance to be forgiven and know that that's coming and forgive one another and repair relationships and, and receive the blessings of baptism and at the Lord's Supper as he comes to us in these tangible ways to assure us of his presence and his power for us. Our God is for us. This is the life that we live through him, standing on that solid rock. So what is at home this Christmas? It looks a whole lot less like socks by a fire and a whole lot more like wet feet on a rock. I hope you enjoy the things that God has blessed you with, the family that's gathered together and the good smells and all the the people and the safety and the peace that that brings, but don't trust in it for more than what it can truly deliver. Is that true feeling of at home, that, that one that will really last, the one that really matters, will only come in our Savior, Jesus Christ, the baby born in Bethlehem. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, help us to find this, this peace. And Lord, I pray if there is someone here tonight that uh, is hearing this for the first time or with new ears, that you would lead them to, to, would you would lead the person sitting next to them to point them in the direction of you and your Savior, to point them toward a church, whether that's here or elsewhere, so that they too can experience this sense of at home here on this side of eternity and fully in the time that is yet to come. Lord, thank you for sending your Son to make us certain that this is the life that we get to live in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.